Well, welcome everyone to tonight's presentation of Opera McGill's Digital Opera Projects. It's a title for um, a group of mini operas that were coached remotely and then put together musically uh, in Worth Opera Studio um, under protocols of masking and all of that, and then also staged remotely and then uh, rehearsed onto the Pollock stage where we filmed them. And what you're going to see tonight are a group of these digital opera projects um, that have been uh, a project unlike anything I've ever tried to coordinate or make happen, and certainly something that our students probably have never done before. So we're really, really excited to share them. And I have with me tonight um, some of the members of the people, some of the members of the team that uh, made all of this happen. So um, I'm Patrick Hansen. I'm the Director of Opera Studies at Opera McGill. And welcome, everyone. Why don't you introduce yourselves and tell them, tell the people at home what you did. Um. My name is Michael Mori. I was the director and uh, I'm the artistic director at Tapestry Opera, so I also helped curate the repertoire. I'm Sawyer Craig um, and I was the assistant director um, on most of the scenes and I directed The Rape of Artemisia. I'm Zach Felsberg Frank. I was the digital opera project coordinator and the assistant conductor. My name's Michael Shannon, and I was one of the official Zoom coaches and co-music directors of the Digital Opera Project. I am Liz, and I worked uh, in management with the tech team uh, for the recording and filming of the opera, and kind of as a little bit of a liaison between the tech team and the production team. And hi, I'm Jennifer Sito. I am the other half of the co-musical direction team, and you will see me as the pianist for a number of these scenes. So I think we'll we'll start with uh, Michael Mori. We have two Michaels on this team, so I'll go with uh, last names. Uh, when the pandemic and the shut, first shutdown happened in, back in March, uh, Michael and I were in uh, communication and we started talking about ideas for how to kind of maneuver through the unknown future because we didn't know what that was going to be and of course you were dealing with uh, tapestry opera um, which is a remarkable opera company in toronto ontario and uh we sort of i don't know together separately came up with this idea of um well if we can't figure out how to how to do a big opera maybe we can figure out how to do mini operas and then you launched into, I've got a whole bunch. Uh, so tell us a little bit about, maybe we should start with Tapestry Opera and then tell us a little bit about the Lib Lab um, from Tapestry Opera, where these pieces came from. Sure, well, um, yeah, I, I mean, maybe the easiest analogy for Tapestry is we're kind of like a Pixar in that we are a relatively small company who develops um, new works and produces them. Um, and that means that sometimes we do shorts, um, and sometimes we do lot larger pieces. Um, they range in size, but it's really what suits the project. Uh, and we've been around for 40 years. Um, we were celebrating our 40th anniversary last season <laughs> until uh, things happened. Um, but uh, the great thing about being a creation company is you're used to adaptation. And so we've we started to kind of go digital for um, a lot of our uh, collaborations. But uh, what you're talking about, Patrick, is something really, really special, part of the DNA of Tapestry, which is the Composer Librettist Laboratory. Um, the Lib Lab has been happening for about 20 years, uh, and it's basically a combination of like speed dating and uh, crucible for finding creative teams and finding um, seed pieces for larger works. Um, and every, every couple of years, we do it for composers, for librettists, for singers, two pianists, um, and a couple of directors. And over the course of 10 days, 16 pieces are created, um, varying in length from three to six minutes. Um, you basically have a day and a half to two days to conceive of, write the libretto for, and compose all of the music for one of these pieces. And so a number of the pieces you're gonna see tonight were written in that amount of time, which is kind of mind boggling. Um, and also a tribute to human resourcefulness. Uh, which is something we've had to, we've had the opportunity opportunity to see a lot of this year. Um, so you know, in in a nutshell, we're really interested in what what contemporary means 
in terms of resonating with the culture that we live in. Um, so we know that it's not necessarily just new crazy stuff, but it's actually stories that matter, music that matters, finding new ways to make opera connect to a hopefully growing audience um, and the artists that are living in the same time as the creators that are writing it. I can totally see Rossini in this lib lab because, you know, he wrote that quickly, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he would have been like, I could do that. Uh, I, I, I can, I can do a whole complete opera, in, you know, tonight. But uh, no, th that's really astounding uh, work that's been done for so many years. And I would imagine that now there would be a, a wealth of material um, from these lib labs sitting around. Um, do you, what's happening? Uh, these are these are Canadian composers for the most part. Canadian librettists. Yeah, I mean, it, um, Canadian composers and librettists. Um, there's a couple where one of the collaborators is uh, international, um, but always one of them is Canadian, and most of the time both of them. Um, but yeah, actually, this is this is a really good question because we're about to launch something called the Canadian Opera Resource, which is going to be the first ever combination of encyclopedia of every single Canadian opera ever written, and um, a resource where you can purchase or ex or explore um, any kind of media so that's available. So it could be a piano vocal score, it could be an MP3 of the recording, um, it could be a link to McGill's Opera's Opera YouTube page, um, where basically if, if you're a young performer looking to explore great works for soprano or soprano and baritone, you can you can find whatever you whatever's out there. Um, and so we're just in the beta test testing phase. And this lines up really nicely with um, where all of these works are going to be included in that resource. So for future generations, um, and we'll, we'll have an opportunity to share, I think, some of the most exciting creators in Canada and a couple different versions of what people think opera should be, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I was really, I'm, I'm really excited to hear that. Um, and I, I think it's going to be a, an amazing resource and, and could really be a game changer as far as uh, Canadian opera is concerned. So I, I'm thrilled. I'm also thrilled that Opera McGill uh, became a part of this collaboration. Um, we, we actually have three of the people here to, tonight are students, uh, Sawyer, Liz, and Zach. Um, uh, Sawyer, I was wondering, maybe you could talk about um, your involvement uh, with this project? It was more than just assistant director. Um, well, assistant directing is always a bit of a mixed bag, right? Because you never really know um, what you will necessarily be needed for or what the job will end up entailing because sometimes you end up uh, very involved, uh, like I was on this project, which was like fantastic for me and I learned so much. And sometimes you're, you're really mostly um, taking notes and getting coffee. Um, and I was so glad that that wasn't the case this time. Um, yeah, it was um, a really interesting project um, in that, like, as an assistant director, I got to be so involved. Um, and uh, I got to really kind of do a lot of communication and a lot of, um, a lot of things that I think um, <laughs> usually, I don't know, um, I wouldn't necessarily be involved in as an assistant director, but because of the nature of the projects and um, because Michael was directing remotely, um, I kind of became involved in, um, which was super exciting. Um, yeah, yeah, man, um, there's a lot that I could talk about. Um, <laughs> I don't know if there's a particular direction that you're interested in me going. Well, no, I, I think it's <laughs> interesting for people to note that like, like Michael was in Toronto directing um, remotely and you sort of became like the, the voice of Michael. Um, and sometimes he was directing directly and sometimes texting. Uh, when we were in the filming process, Michael and I were texting because I was in Alexandria, Ontario, where I live and doing producing remotely. And um, <laughs> I was texting Jennifer, I was texting Zach, I was texting Michael, I was texting you. <laughs> and, you know, I, I just, uh, you know, what a way to go. It, it would have been a little easier if we'd all been in the same room. Uh, but, uh, you know, hey, that's how things go.
place like this. Why, why did you run away? It wasn't your fault that she... You're wasting your time. You're wasting your life. Oh, 
you still have a husband and he still loves you and he needs you i can show you the way to peace back in our home i'll show you you are the warmth i have left hope still heavy with her fever go find her warmth the word song and leave me in peace and leave me in peace you will never find peace here isabel you've only found pain here isabel I could see it in your eyes when you came in. I could see it in your face. The God can lift you up. Holy God, you'll never find peace here, Isabel. You've only found pain.
45 degrees. No. 90. I pretend. I pretend to move this pen. Hope to make these lines connect and form some meaning. Liz was on the other side of the camera, um, and she she was on the producing wing of this um, of this show, so to speak. Uh, Liz, do you want to talk? Tell tell us a little bit about what you were doing. Yeah, so um, so I'm uh, I'm a sound recording student. So I was started out as just a member of the sound recording team, um, and that kind of elevated, I think, to a little bit more involvement as we went. 
Um, and, and I ended up kind of being a little bit of a liaison between the tech team, so the, the audiovisual team and the, the production team. Um, and so that involved, uh, you know, making sure that we had everybody set to record and mix and score read for each individual opera scene, making sure we knew what the stage setup looked like for each opera scene so that we, we would know how to mix that and how to film that. Um, coordinating the camera positions with um, w with George, who who is uh, who directs the uh, the webcast and filming uh, productions here at McGill, um, and so it was a lot of coordination um, until the day of, and then on the day of, I ended up uh, actually operating a camera on the stage, so that was a lot of fun, and um, and yeah, yeah, right next to Jennifer, and um, th it was a great time, and I mixed a couple of the of the audio for a couple of the scenes as well. So yeah, I had a great time working with everybody and, and getting to be on the production side of things was, was really nice. Yeah. You were like on the ground with a camera, weren't you at some point? Like you were. Yes. Beauty Mark. Your... Yes. Beauty Mark. I, I, I ended up crawling, crawling across the floor with a camera, you know, cradled in my arm at one point. It, that was great. That was a lot of fun. That might've been my favorite part of the whole thing actually. Yeah. That is definitely not something one one learns like in a classroom. <laughs> Absolutely um, not. The, the the field experience on this production was was phenomenal. Liz was injured in that take. Liz, didn't you cut your leg open like on the floor? On the floor. Yes, floor. There, was, there was a bit of a splinter on the stage, <laughs> so we had to take a brief pause for me to you know pour some Purell on my knee and and uh, patch it up. <laughs> wow. Um, that, that in itself could be a really cool opera. Um, so, uh, so Zach didn't have any blood, uh, being let, I think, I, th I think you managed to get through this unharmed physically. Um, but, uh, you were juggling a lot of schedules, um, qu quite an, a lot of them. Uh, do you want to talk about that? Yes. Um, well, so that everyone had, you know, their own personal schedule with their classes and their coachings and their lessons. So we had to work around that and then find times when, you know, groups of each group can meet with the coach or with Michael or with, you know, whoever needed to meet with them. Um, and so it was a lot of, you know, oh, these two people works there, but not the third person. So uh, lots of time spent juggling schedules. But once we got into the actual production, it was it was awesome to be in the room and be making music with people again. Yeah, and you sort of almost became a producer, a sort of personality, because I, I would text you and I'd be like, make sure they get done right on their break. And I would hear you on the link, you know, stand up and be like, okay, we need to take a break. I'm like, okay, Zach's the boss. Um, yeah. But you also did some musical yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, you did uh, some coaching and you also waved your hands in some rehearsals, didn't you? I did, yeah. There were times, I mean, most of these pieces, or all these pieces are just piano and singers, but there were a couple of times when things weren't coming together exactly so Jen had asked me to wave my hands um and just make come together or help it come together and uh you know eventually they didn't need a conductor which was great and One if anything of... went wrong I could blame Zach exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah always great to blame Zach um so the musical side of these is this opera so there's music um it was really tricky um we we cast these mini operas way back uh, before school began. Uh, our students actually auditioned uh, back in June, and then we we cast the operas uh, in addition to these digital operas. Last weekend, we did The Old Maid and the Thief, which was recorded. And um, they had to learn their, their parts without meeting with a coach in person. And initially, almost all of this was done by Michael Shannon, who is our remote coach he created, um, I was wondering, like, do you want, tell, tell, tell us what you did. I don't need to. Sure. Yeah. Well, um, when I found out I was co coaching contemporary opera during a pandemic, um, I immediately was thinking this is the stuff, uh, nightmares are made of, um, what the heck am I going to do? Um, but, uh, I guess the first thing that we all decided is that it'd be a good idea to have, uh, a rough idea of uh, of how this goes you know it's nice for people to hear how something goes generally and so for each scene i uh, prepared a track for people to uh, to study with as a starting point but um um all the challenge with tracks is you don't want people to copy it so you want to get something that's 
palatable but doesn't sort of point people in one direction or another so um that's sort of when the where the coaching comes in and, and that was that was a lot of fun i have to say i love coaching contemporary music particularly because you're making these first discoveries alongside the students um for the very first time and that's really thrilling um and uh because there aren't any hard rules it really frees um frees people up to experiment and uh that's uh, maybe the most fun you can have as a as a coach when you're sort of both there for the ride you know coaching Deviani non tardar is always exciting but you can't you can't you know bring that aria to the coaching room without you know a bit of baggage you know so um and i think just coaching during the pandemic uh as artists we i think to some degree thrive a lot on um, a bit of chaos and with the pandemic i think it was a bit more chaos than we would have liked but um seeing the the students uh step up and uh, transcend uh those difficulties was really heartening and um ultimately like a really joyous experience and uh ultimately that kind of um honing of personal responsibility um, is this going to make them, you know, more powerful, um, creative people? And so, um, even though, you know, it's hard now, I think that a year or two years later, uh, we might be happy there was, <laughs> there was a silver lining to the pandemic because it made people come together and step up. So, yeah, you know, the giving the students the autonomy to make a lot of decisions and a lot of choices. Uh, I, I know Michael had to do that from a standpoint of uh, direction. Uh. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I, I think um, I always encourage that in performers, but um, in this case, because, you know, I was literally not available to be in the room, um, people had to make decisions and they had to bring a lot to the table. And I was so impressed with uh, the students for how much they brought to the table. Um, some pe people bringing complete concepts, others really um, growing from when we did two days of table work to all of a sudden, you know, bringing a very mature character on stage. Um, so I think it, the challenge was thrown. And I think as Michael said, there, there was the space um, for, for them to bring themselves into the piece. And, uh, and it was really pleased with how hard everybody worked. Yeah, there were so many times I would say to Sawyer, um, I don't know what the answer is. You just uh, find it, figure it out. And the same with Zach. Zach would be like, well, should I, you know, how I'm like, make it work. <laughs> and, and I just sort of throw it back at him. And then like, I would get this, you know, this coordination of a schedule that was just impeccable. Um, so you'll be hearing Michael actually play on one of the digital opera projects, A Little Rain Must Fall. Um, and that that digital opera project is uh, the two singers. One is in Edmonton and one is down in Virginia. So there's no way to get them together. But all the rest of these projects, uh, the singers were able to be in Montreal and they were able to come together. Now they rehearsed in Worth Opera Studio, Masked. They uh, did their initial rehearsals in Pollock as well as you know, it masked, but they had a live pianist with them. And that live pianist was Jennifer Zeto. Um, Jennifer, you know, tell us about what this was like and particularly what it was like for two days to record all of these operas over and over and over again. It was super easy, first of all. Uh, kind of a breeze, as easy as the editing process that came afterwards. Wink to George, wink to Martha. Um, no, all jokes aside, I think uh, the rehearsal process, you know, Michael's talking about silver linings. And I have to say um, for myself personally, the whole process has been really surreal. Um, you know, I don't think we've ever been more aware of how um, being close physically and being in proximity to one another really matters. Um, and, you know, we were careful to keep distance um, in rehearsals and whatnot. Um, but we, I think all of us in the room just missed being with one another. Um, and I think this digital opera projects will always be a very special um, kind of memory for me because um, not only did I see extremely adaptive, resilient um, artistry and music making, but I was seeing this from a team of students um, and 
kudos to Zach, to Sawyer, to the entire performance team. I don't think that, I think sometimes um, we're not aware of the mountain that we are climbing while we are climbing it. Um, but what's done here at McGill was like, for me, in my books, it was kind of historic. It's like we didn't know what was possible until we did it. Um, and I just, I'm very, very grateful for this opportunity to have worked with this team. And it is really through the team and through the contributions of every single person. Martha had told us this and she's absolutely right. Um, it's really through each person's contributions that this project was able to, um, to fly. So I just kudos to everybody for making that happen. Yeah, I, I, that's a great way to end this. Um, it was a team effort. And I think that when people are watching this, actually in many of these videos, you'll see, you may see some of the cameras, you may see the, the microphone stands. Uh, we weren't trying to hide that. Um, you'll see Jennifer and on some of them, there are some far away uh, long shots where you can see the setup where Jennifer was and where the singers were in Pollock. And uh, so I think it'll be uh, really interesting. They're also different too. That's the, the other thing about these pieces. Um, so uh, when you're when you go to the when when you're on this link, you're watching this, you can see down in the YouTube link that there is a program um, and you can click on that link to see the program where you can find out a lot of information who all the camera people were who was really recording this. Uh, there's in, information about the composers and the librettists in that as well as the singers. So uh, be sure to check out that link. Uh, also be sure to follow um, our social media, follow Tapestry Opera's social media. They're on Instagram and they're on Facebook and Opera McGill is as well. Um, they're having, uh, they're actually uh, on Saturday night, the Saturday night performance. Um, our, uh, Tapestry Opera has something at 8 p.m. after after this. Um, can you want to plug in that for its love letters? Yeah. Uh I'm, I'm actually at, at the studio now finishing rehearsal and we're going into recording tomorrow. It's uh, Anna Sokolovich's Love Songs, uh, Montreal-based composer, um, fully staged with Xin Wang and Wallace Holiday. Um, and uh, the concept is, anyway, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun, a fully staged production um, that I got to do in the room, which is the first time since lockdown. So um, it's going to be a wonderful show. You can uh, find it on our YouTube uh, channel at Tapestry Opera. Great. I'm all about plugs. Um, so I'll plug our next production, which is January 30th and 31st. We're doing a live webcast from Paula Hall of Benjamin Britten's The Turn of the Screw with the McGill Symphony Orchestra. And uh, uh, we've got costumes. Um, so, well, we don't have them yet, but uh, we have to figure out how to do fittings, but that's a whole other protocol. But uh, thank you all for all of the, your amazing work um, and uh, for making this happen. I, I can't believe we're here. And so uh, off we go for Opera McGill's Digital Opera Projects. I can't see. swollen blood come little one
Oh. 